Scoot Anderson was supposed to be the future of the franchise for the Portland Trailblazers, a player that in any other draft that didn't include Victor Weminyama would have been a strong contender for the first overall pick. I loved him as a prospect. Plenty of other people loved him as a prospect. I saw him in person in limited action in the summer league and really thought he was going to be outstanding and really great initially as well. He was supposed to have a fantastic start to his career, but so far, I'm extremely concerned about what I've seen from Scoot Henderson. Now, the obvious caveat here is that Scoot Henderson is just 19 years old and he hasn't even played 25 games yet in the NBA. It's gonna take him some time to figure it out, especially when you consider that he missed some time at the beginning of the year. It's gonna be difficult for him to truly get into a rhythm, but it is still possible to be concerned about how he has looked to begin his career. And for me, the number one most concerning thing about him right now is his finishing at the rim because we all knew coming into the league that Scoot was going to struggle as a perimeter shooter. He wasn't going to be some outstanding 40% three-point shooter initially to start his career. That's something we're gonna talk about later in the video, but that was a known fact. But something that we felt really strongly about, and by we, I mean people like myself that really liked Scoot as a prospect, thought that his at-rim finishing was going to be good enough and his mid-range shooting was gonna be good enough to still make him a really good player straight away and eventually grow into an even better one as he improved his three-point shooting. And then he was a really good playmaker as well. He could get to the rim, was a great athlete. And even though he's only like 6'2", maybe 6'3", the at-rim finishing in the G League as a prospect was good. It was something that was a strength of his game. And so far in the NBA, this has been a huge, huge concern for me. Not only because the numbers aren't great, he's not shooting well on twos, he's shooting terrible on threes, which like I said, we're gonna talk about. But anytime that he gets to the rim, if you take out the mid-range part of his game, him getting all the way to the rim and him shooting from three have both been an absolute catastrophe for him. And it, it's more than just that, it's more than just the numbers. Some of these finishes look like a guy that's that's reaching and that's pressing and that knows that he isn't finishing as well at the rim as he was at any other point in his basketball career, which makes me nervous when you're dealing with a smaller player that's getting accustomed to more length at the NBA level, that's getting accustomed to these guys being better at not fouling at the rim. This looks like a player, a lot of these finishes to me, look like a guy that is struggling and is pressing and is trying to do all these different weird little things in terms of how he's contorting his body at the rim, or he's just desperate to draw a foul because he knows that he's not gonna make the shot. And the athleticism and the quickness and the burst and all that stuff is still there, but there's a skill issue right now and a confidence issue when Scoot gets to the rim. And that's a huge, massive concern for me, especially when you combine it with what at this point in his career is a disaster from three-point shooting range as well. This was something that we knew about. This was something that was always going to be a point of improvement for Scoot Henderson. And the combination of how bad he's been at finishing and how bad he's been at shooting on pretty high volume from three, by the way, makes me very, very nervous in terms of him being like the lead guard future of the franchise. And it's it's kind of a similar thing too with the finishing where it's not just that he's not shooting well from three. It's not just that the numbers are bad it's that there are a lot of really bad misses too. Like you can be not a great at rim finisher, but sometimes you just get a weird roll or it's something that you're adjusting to or figuring out. But when you're missing poorly at the rim and when you're airballing pull up threes or kick out threes and your confidence level is as low as it seems like Scoots is right now, that's gonna make me nervous, especially as a player that typically comes across as a very confident player. And the, the issue for him as he moves forward in his career is going to be that if you're going to be not very good at shooting or not very good at finishing at the rim as a smaller guard, you have to be elite at one of the other things. You can be an average to a below average finisher. You can be an average to a below average three point shooter and still be a good guard, still be something resembling what we all hope Scoot Henderson would be. But you have to be elite at the other thing. You have to be a Damian Lillard level three point shooter or you have to be an elite finisher. And so if he's not going to get better at some of these things throughout the year, I'm going to obviously start getting concerned that one, neither of those skills are going to be elite eventually, but also that they're going to be so bad that one of those skills being elite is going to be a necessity to him being a top tier guard eventually at some point in his career. And really the, the trifecta of all of this, the bad finishing, the, the poor shooting, the third piece to this 
is the turnovers. And again, it's a theme of every single piece that we've talked about is you can look at the numbers and see that he's turning the ball over and that's going to happen. He's a young guard. It's going to take him some time to adjust to speed at the NBA level and making the correct decisions in ball screens. And if his turnovers were just, oh, he misread this ball screen and threw a lob when he shouldn't have, those are fine. But there are way too many, in even such a small sample size, way too many turnovers where I can't even begin to tell you what Scoot Henderson is looking at on any of these plays individually. I can't, even if I really, really want to try and talk myself into what he was looking at, what the decision-making process looked like. And when you have finishes that look as bad as his, misses that look as bad as his, and turnovers that look as bad as his, when you're someone that's supposed to be the future of a franchise, I understand that you're not 20 years old yet. I understand that he's only played a handful of games, but when they're this bad, I'm gonna start getting concerned because then it leads to what's been an issue for him as well, which is a player that clearly is losing some some confidence here, which was never supposed to be a thing for him. He was this this ferocious competitor and this guy that you know never really backed down from anything. And I'm starting to see a guy that is almost questioning his ability to finish, his ability to shoot, and his ability to make the correct decisions and not turn the ball over it. Now, in a video that has obviously been incredibly negative about Scoot, I did want to point out a, a pretty large positive for him, and that is his pull up his pull up twos, his pull up twos, his mid range game. It's been pretty good. It's, it looks even better in comparison to how bad he's been at everything else. But clearly, he still has, has a comfort level. This is a comfort shot for him where everything looks natural. His decision-making process looks clean. It looks like he knows that these shots are going in. There's not a lot of bad misses on these pull-up twos. And whether it was in Summer League, whether it was as a, as a prospect in the G League, this was something that clearly he had worked on and he had improved and he really wanted to continue to add to his game. And the pull-up twos are good. And that's going to be a nice weapon for him, especially if he's going to be someone that isn't going to be a, a good three-point shooter. If he can be an elite finisher and be good in the mid-range the way that he has been even already to begin his career, that's going to certainly help him because these spots on the floor are going to be open for him as teams really start to sag off of him if he's really just not going to be a great three-point shooter. And so for me... The concern here is obvious, right? Needs to get better at finishing, needs to get better at shooting, needs to not turn the ball over a ton. But it was go it was clear that even if I thought that he was going to be, you know, like a 15, 16 point per game guy as a rookie, point guards have the hardest transition in the league in terms of getting better and actually being a high impact, highly efficient player from college or the G League to the NBA. It's the hardest transition that we have in the NBA, especially if you're someone like Scoot Henderson that is traditional point guard size. If you're 6'2", 6'3", it's going to be difficult. So it's gonna take him some time. And I'm not completely freaking out. I'm not trying to call this guy a bust, but when when you're supposed to be the cornerstone of the franchise and the, and the guy that is going to have the ball in his hands a ton, the decision maker all the time, if he doesn't become elite at a couple of these skills that improve tremendously, you get put in a very weird situation if you're Portland, because if he's not good enough to have the ball all the time, the way that Dame did, then he starts to become a very weird fit alongside pretty much anybody else that you bring in. And it just puts you in a difficult spot because if Scoot's not the main guy and he's not a good spacer, it's hard to pair him alongside of someone else. And you just start to think about some of these roster issues you could potentially have. If you draft Scoot Henderson, his prototype, his archetype is of a player that is going to have the ball a ton and is going to be creating and is going to be the engine of your offense. And if he isn't that guy, as it appears that he won't be at least to the first handful of games of his career, if he's not that guy, it becomes that much more difficult to figure out where he fits on your roster in an efficient way. If he can't figure out the spacing, he can't really be an effective off-ball player. And that's a massive concern. Now I say all this to say, of course, 19 years old, handful of games in a league and I wouldn't have made this video if it was just marginally concerning if it was oh you know he's not shooting the ball that well but at least he still has some confidence or hey he's not finishing that well but he'll figure it out there is a is a level of extreme that my concern has gone to for me to even bother making this video in the first place and I desperately desperately hope that he improves in Portland throughout the rest of his rookie season